And so the, 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 pre the premise for medical management is basically ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation. If you some, have someone who's hypotensive or hypoxic, you know, in addition to their spinal cord injury or their brain injury for that matter, things are gonna go badly. You're gonna, you're gonna promote secondary in, injury. We're gonna talk about pharmacotherapy, mobilization, nutrition, DVT prophylaxis, and rehabilitation. Um, and just keeping in mind that all of these treatments may or may have not undergone either phase one, phase two, or phase three studies to, to prove their efficacy. And we'll try to distinguish between those different types of studies in terms of the evidence for uh, its use. So, uh, you know, it was in 1990, so it's now 32 years since this paper was published, and it was a very impactful paper in the New England Journal of Medicine that was, and it was, it was impactful because it was a randomized controlled trial looking at methylprednisolone for acute spinal cord injury. You can see all of these luminaries in neurosurgery who uh, were involved in the study, in particularly, you know, uh, uh, Wise Young um, and others uh, who were, who did a lot of the basic science work beforehand. And essentially, if you look at the study, it was a large study, spinal cord injury, multi-center, and it looked at methylprednisolone versus naloxone versus control, and found essentially that uh, there was improvement with methylprednisolone at the doses listed here. But you know, there were a lot of questions about the study, particularly things like the subgroup analysis uh, that, that was showing efficacy. Uh, and I can go on and on of all the criticism. So we went through a phase where we gave methylprednisolone to everyone. And now we're in a phase where we give it to very few. Uh, and the, um, we, we do have guidelines. And the guidelines currently, and it could change, state that it's not recommended and the reason why it's not recommended is that the evidence for uh, complications is higher than the evidence for benefit. One of the real challenges in any spinal cord injury research is that patients without any treatment tend to improve. And this is a combination of a number of studies looking that if you're Asia A, that there's at least a three to 5% chance that you could um, change to an Asia D without any treatment. So the reason why that becomes difficult is that any treatment that you plan, you, you've got to understand that there'll be a, maybe a natural history of some recovery. So any drug or treatment that you um, suggest has to be better than the natural history. And again, this is a natural history chart showing how many people who are Asia A are ambulating after a year, um, how many with a B. And, and as you become less and less injured and more and more young, the chances of you recovering become higher. So if you're Asia C, less than 50 years of age, there's a 91% chance you'll be ambulating at the end of a year. So this is just, again, some comments about natural history. This is the, a, a table from that methylprednisolone study showing that it was a very small subgroup that showed benefit, not, not the entire uh, group. And one of the big criticisms is that they the eight-hour uh, effect. So if they looked at the entire group of patients who were enrolled, there was no effect. They had to do a subgroup analysis of those who got treated less than eight hours. Um, and then these are the complications, which when you look grossly are not insignificant, such things like wound infection, GI bleed, not significant, but you can see there seem to be considerably highly, higher in the methylprednisolone group than in the controls. So this was uh, the, the results of the NASCIS-2 study. 
but as I said, in the current 2013 guidelines, and I'm sure that 2023, they'll come up with another one, it's currently uh, not recommended with level one uh, evidence. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.